So the summary essentially is when you're going from rectangular to polar, right, the, 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 the long way, is to find all, we're literally just going to use Pythagorean's theorem, right, using x and y to find the radius, right? So essentially, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, okay? Uh, when it comes to finding the uh, theta, we're going to be using tangent theta and using our x's and y's to figure that out, right? So essentially, tan theta is going to equal tan inverse of y over x, just like we did in the previous example. Okay, we're going to figure out where it is when it comes to that. Okay, so this one's going to be a little tricky going backwards itself. Okay, but we can still do it. Not too bad. Okay. So why don't we try some examples? You know, let's try these examples out. Okay. So first one, 0, comma, negative 2. Okay. So if it's easier, I always just like to draw it to tell me what quadrant it is to see if it's going to be a negative or positive value itself, right? Right, so 0, negative 2, so that is exactly right there. Okay, all right, so again, just in case, right, x and y. So I know my radius is going to be essentially 2, right? r is equal to square root of 0 plus 4 squared, so 4. So r is going to equal to 2. And now for a theta, it's going to be tangent theta is equal to um, negative 2 over 0. Well, that's that's no bueno. That's undefined, right? So essentially, when is tangent undefined? Through pi over two. Now, what if you're going to roll? It's also undefined at pi over two. Well, remember, right? The point was down here, and since that the point is technically down here, we kind of want the same roughly point on the same bottom scale. So that's why we don't choose pi over two because that will be up here. Uh, since that it's negative two it would be closer to 3 pi over 2 itself, because we kind of want to see in the same quadrant when it comes to it. Okay. So there you go. So our point is um, 2 comma 3 pi over 2 in the polar coordinates. Okay. Let's try the next one. So again, I'll just quickly go on radius, right? So it'll be 9 times 9 is 18, so it'll be radical 18, forget the radius. So this is going to be tangent theta of negative 3 over negative 3. So this is going to be tangent of positive 1. Now again, just in case you're not sure, right, let me give you another piece of paper. So to plot this real quick. So negative 3, negative 3 is down here. Right, so we know it's going to be in quadrant three, right, respectively. So now we're going to figure out, right, so if we go back to our unit circle, we want positive one. So when is it positive one? And it's positive one right here, right? It's in quadrant two. And that's going to be five pi over four. So this is going to be theta is equal to 5 pi over 4. Now, like I said earlier, right, I gave you guys the, the portion it's tan inverse. Okay. Now, here is the trick part, and that's the reason why this is kind of funky. Okay. Um, technically, the rule is if it's outside the range, because, you know, tan inverse only goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. But... If it's outside the range, because technically this is outside the range, correct? Right, this is in quadrant two, or which is, or quadrant three, which is not defined in tan inverse. You essentially just want to add pi to that portion. So you add pi to tan inverse of y over x. And that's kind of that is, right? So if I literally add pi, pi to that, that is pi over four, which is good, right? So it's a trick question, and I didn't want to go through it, but if it's easy to deal with, don't worry about the actual inverse itself. Just look at where the actual point should be on the xy plane, and that will tell you exactly where the theta is going to be. Does that make sense? Um, so you don't actually have to abide by that rule as long as you're able to figure out what quadrant you're in, and then going from the quadrant, go to here and see where the quadrants, you know, what the angle should be. So if we're in quadrant two, you know, if the point's in quadrant two in the xy plane, you kind of want an angle 
in quadrant two, and then three, four, you know, respectively. If that's a little easier to understand, um, for me it was easier to understand than you figure out, you know, I'm adding, you know, adding pi to the inverse of all that fun stuff. You literally just, you know, figure out what the point is, which again is the easiest one if you just draw it out and you can tell. Okay, I have to have an angle in quadrant, you know, three in this case. So I'm only looking at here when it comes to those angles itself. Okay. It also makes it easier to look at because you know, since we're doing tangent. You have to, you know, mentally figure out, you know, what happens if I divide y over x? Do I get exactly that itself? Okay, so I'll give you guys a little heads up there. So let's try a C so you can see how that would work out as well. Okay, All right. So let's just draw C out for you guys. So here's C. Okay, so C is related to. So it's going to be down here again in quadrant three, right? So that's you know somewhere over here. So we want to find R, right, respectively. So this one's going to be a little different, right? Because R is the square root of negative two squared, which is four, plus this squared. Now this we got to be very careful. This is four times three actually, right? Because you're squaring both things. So just let me write it down here for you guys what I mean by that. So this is R squared is equal to negative two squared plus negative two radical three squared. Well, this gives you 4. Now, this squared squares both of them. So, negative 2 squared gives you 4, and then radical 3 squared gives you 3, right? Because they cancel each other out. So, that's actually how you do that portion, right? So, they just don't cancel one, they cancel both. So, this ends up being 12 plus 4 gives you 16. Okay? Well, we know what 16 is, right? So, we know a nice 4. Radius is going to be 4. All right, so now that we have the radius, now we go into tangent. All right, so tan theta, so I'll just write down here right on the space here. So tan theta is equal to negative 2 radical 3 over negative 2. Well, that just simplifies to radical 3, right, positive radical 3. Now again, right, since we're in quadrant 3, we want to find which angle will give you, you know, uh, radical 3 once you divide y over x. And it looks like the only one that works is exactly here. So our theta is going to be 4 pi over 3. So there's our radius and there's our theta. Okay. Oh, actually, you'll have both those points. So this is two points in one. R is 4 or negative 4, depending on what we want. Okay. Now, let's try the last one, D. And I'm going to tweak D because it's just kind of funky. So I'm going to give you guys a new D. So this is going to be our D instead. That one there. Radical 3 and negative 1. Okay. All right. So radical 3 and negative 1. I'll just quickly draw it here. So radical 3... Negative 1 is, say, roughly there, right? I just, I just know it's going to quadrant 4. That's all that really matters. Okay. So, just finding R, right? So, R is equal to square root of 3 plus 1, which is 4. So, again, it's going to be plus or minus 2. All right. So, we get two points from this. And then, find theta. So, theta is going to equal to negative 1 over radical 3. And since we're in quadrant four, okay, quadrant four, it's going to be one of these three. Okay. All right, so which one is going to be? It looks like it's this one. But again, this is the tricky part, right? It's technically not 11 pi over 6. Because again, if you add pi to that, it doesn't give you that. So you have to go opposite direction, just like we did the first one. So this is going to be... negative pi over 6. So theta is equal to negative pi over 6, and the r's are going to be 2 and 2. And there we go. So like I said, going backwards is a little difficult. You just you know, take your time when it comes to it so you can see what you know what is going to be in and things like that. 
Okay, now the last part of this section is, you know, just going back forwards and backwards. So the last part of this section is just, you know, converting the equation to either polar or rectangular coordinates. Now, this is pretty straightforward. It's just using the steps we did above to deal with it, okay?